All right, the next piece up on the pottery throwdown challenge is a piece of pottery that was submitted to me by Haley. Uh, Haley says this piece was made by Kate Bauman from Lake City, Minnesota, and it is a functional piece. Uh, that would mean that the inside of the vessel has been sealed with glaze. Uh, the outside of the vessel uh, does not appear to have glaze on it, but it has been fired in a manner that... Uh, makes the clay um, at a point where it, it's fully matured. It has reached a point of maximum non-porosity. Um, but because it would be functional on the inside, um, if there were food or water, it's not contacting the outside surface. So that's partly okay too in the fact that the outside surface doesn't really have a glaze on it. So um, anyway, um, you can get a look at the piece. Um, so this is what I'm going to attempt to make. Here we go. So I'm starting off with um, 6.13 pounds of clay. I have that in the middle of my bat. And as I begin the coning and centering process, pressing downward to make sure it's stuck to that bat. I'm working today with WS5. This is a decent clay body for both hand building and wheel throwing. It may not be as popular for wheel throwing because it has a, a fair amount of grog in it, which gives it kind of a sandy feel. But that grog, that sand that's in it, uh, that feeling that you have, that adds to the strength and the durability of the clay. So it just gives it a bit more versatility than if it were a really smooth porcelain clay body. So at any rate, this is also fresh clay. Uh, as opposed to working with clay that's been recycled and put through a, a pug mill, to recycle scrap. This is clay that's fresh. Uh, comes in a bag, 25 pound block, two 25 pound blocks in a box. So this is fresh WS5. So because it's fresh clay, the coning and the centering process is expedited a little bit. You don't have to do it as many times because the clay, generally speaking, is already more uniform than clay that you might get from a pug mill. So, once I get my pot, my piece of clay pretty much in the size and shape that I want it to be so that I can work with it effectively, I know that this pot's gonna be a little bit taller, have a little bit narrower base, so I'm gonna go ahead and before I start to hole it out, I'm going to take that base in a little bit. I don't have to push it in later. I'm okay with that, so now I'm going to start holing out the clay. This is the next step. So my piece of clay is cone and centered. It's basically right there in the middle of my, my bat. It's not wobbling. It's not going to throw anything off. So. I slow down the speed and I visualize where the middle happens to be. Once I find that middle, I take my ring and middle finger of my left hand and I start creating that opening. This is done much in the same way as when you make a pinch pot. Is you basically find the middle and you stick your thumb or your finger in there and make that opening and with wheel throwing this is what the process looks like. So in this case as I'm working with the wheel the wheel head is spinning the clay so unlike with a pinch pot when you put your thumb in and you have to pinch and turn and pinch and turn and pinch and turn the wheel head is moving and it's taking care of that movement for me. So here I just want to make sure that as I hold it out that I set my depth. 
I don't want to go too deep. If I go too deep, the bottom of my pot's going to become too thin and too fragile. So once I set my depth, and I'm basically at the top of my fingers, and I can use that as a guide out here, and I can see that from the top of my fingers I have about three-eighths of an inch left at the top. So I'm good with that. So once I've set the depth after I'm done holing it out, the next step in the process is called opening. So I work to keep my right hand as stationary as possible. And I slowly, with my left hand, I'm kind of making a big clamp. Okay, my left thumb on the outside of my right hand and I'm making a big clamp. I'm squeezing my fingers outward. Okay. Depending upon the amount of clay you're working with, that may look a little bit different. But the process is the same. So what I'm doing with opening is I'm moving the clay from the middle outward so that I can ultimately pull it upward. So in most cases when you're opening, you are setting the inside diameter of the pot because all of the pulling that you're going to do to make the wall thinner as well as taller all of that pulling is done from the outside of the pot so now that I've got my opening set I'm gonna clean up a little bit of slip I'm gonna slow down my wheel a little bit I want to get ready to pull. I want to use plenty of lubrication and now with a larger piece of clay like this I also use my sponge rather than just my fingers that I might use just on a, on a smaller piece of clay when I make bowls and cylinders that are small in scale, small in size, small drinking vessels or a cereal bowl kind. Those are basically finger pots. I don't need to use a sponge. But when I work with larger amounts of clay like this, I like to incorporate the sponge, get a little bit more surface area as I pull the clay upward. As I'm pulling upward, my right hand is doing most of the work. My left hand is there as a guide. And I want to try and make that pull, if possible, I want to go slightly inward with it. And when I've done a pull, I want to come back and compress the rim. Oftentimes that's done just with a thumb and a finger. Doesn't matter your pointer or your middle. But then you take the pointer from your other hand and gently compress the rim. Okay. So, because I want to go slightly inward here, I'm going to gently, with my hands wet, I'm going to find a point on the outer wall and I'm going to start squeezing inward and upward. So on my side of the pot, my thumbs are touching one another. If I continued this process, eventually you would see, on your side of the pot, you would see my fingers touch one another. But for right now, my pot is too big for me to be able to do that. So, I have a couple more pulls that I need to make. So, but I am going to mop up some water from the inside. I need water in there for to keep my fingers wet, fingers that are on the inside of the pot. But I don't need so much water that there's a puddle in the bottom of my pot. Most of my water needs to be here on the outside. So as I create a groove at the bottom, I start moving that clay upward. What's important to understand is that on the outside of my pot where my sponge is, that height 
my fingers on the inside are actually a little higher. And that helps to control the wall as I move it upward. It's a little bit of resistance is what it really amounts to. If my hand wasn't on the inside doing this, all I'd be doing is pushing the clay in. And I wouldn't actually be moving clay up to thin out the wall and make it taller at the same time. So now that I'm just using my fingers, basically where my right pointer is on the inside of the pot is where my left fingers are riding. They're in that groove above my right hand. And as I get higher, my hand will reach around. I can actually put my thumb and my right hand together and I can make a more effective pull at the very top. Now what you also see here is those marks, those were created by my fingernails. So I am going to Holler that back in a little bit. It's important to understand that when you're when you're working with clay, it's like when you roll out a slab, it's really difficult to fold it back over and work it again. And with wheel throwing, it's much the same idea, but once you open it, it's difficult to bring it back. So as you pull, it's really important to pull from that bottom and bring it up and keep it as uniform as possible all the way. A little bit out is okay, but if I brought it out to here, I wouldn't be able to bring it back to this size. That would be very, very difficult. I've had to try it a couple times and so far my success rate hasn't been very good. that compression, even out the rim. All right, so I think I have one more pull that I can make. So I'm gonna get a little water on the outside, have water inside. So it's really important when you're pulling to maintain the same pace from bottom to top, if at all possible. Any movement that's too fast and you're likely to skip over part of the pot, and you're going to end up with an uneven wall. Too slow, and well, that's okay but just gonna, you're just gonna be at it longer. So 
we saw with the last pull, all those marks that were made by my fingernails. It's not that I have long fingernails, it's just the angle of my finger as it relates to the surface of the clay. But now by using my sponge, I can go back again, smooth out that outer wall a little bit, make another pull, and get that to the top. So, as I started with 6.13 pounds, my hand span is a little over 9 inches, so I'm going to guess that 9, 10, 11, about 11 and a half inches is my, the height of my pot here. The wall is a good thickness for this size of a pot. I want to reach in and make sure that I mop up the water from the inside that I can. Clean that up a little bit. So now what's important, if I'm happy with the overall thickness and, and height, I know too that from that height to that pot that as I make the belly, as I give this a nice big belly and bring the rim back in, my pot's going to get shorter. So it's important to understand that that 11 inches, by the time I'm done, it's going to be probably closer to 9 if not a little bit less. Much depends upon how wide I choose to make that pot this pot. Okay. So as I get ready to do that, what I'm also going to do is because the base of the pot, go ahead and make it a little bit narrower. Okay. And I'm going to do that from the bottom. And I'm gently going to squeeze inward. Make that bottom narrower. I can't make it too small in diameter because I got to still be able to fit my arm on the inside. But once I've made it a little narrower, then I can get that clay from the bottom and then I can move that up. And ultimately, the pot's going to get a little bit taller. This is kind of like when you make a, when you blow up a balloon and you tie it off. The balloon itself has a shape, so when you squeeze it, all you're doing, because you've tied it off, you're not changing the volume of air inside, you're just changing the shape. So in much the same way here, until I start cutting or trimming, all I'm doing is changing the shape. I haven't changed the volume, just change the shape. So now with that little bit of movement bringing in the base, remember I had about 11 inches and now I'm closer to 12. So that was pretty significant. Okay, and I think that's going to be good for where I want to go with this piece. So I'm going to start by trimming out a little bit at the base here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a, one of my tools here that's going to help me get inside. So this is a tool that I picked up a number of years ago at the clay convention. It's a bamboo stick and it's going to help me create that belly shape of this pot. So as I do that I wet that tool and from the inside I'm going to slowly push outward and I want to do so in a manner that leaves me enough clay at the top so I can bring it back in so as I work to create the belly I'm only working on this bottom portion because the top side is going to get smaller to create the opening. So if I stretch all that out, remember I talked about that? If I stretch all that clay out, then I'm going to have a real hard time bringing it back. So by just using this wooden tool, okay, all right, 
the screen went blank. Timed out because I'm getting too long on the video. All right, there we go. So I'm going to switch hands and I'm going to use this in my left hand. Now for this process, there's any number of tools that could be used. Potters around the world have their tool of preference that they use for this process. I don't do this a lot, so I don't have a preference. But you can see how it's starting to change shape very nicely. So, now I think I'm actually going to go because I've got a little start on it. I'm going to try it with my hand inside. I mop up some water from the inside. While I do that, I can make a pass at it with the sponge along the inside wall. So I need to have, I've got to make sure that the hand that's inside or the tool, whatever I'm using, has. Uh, it is wet. It's got to be lubricated when you're doing this. So as I, as I work this on the outside, I am, just so I don't go too far, I am using my right hand as a point of resistance on the outside as well. So I think that's pretty good shape. So I'm going to use my, I have a potter's rib. This one is green in color because the company that makes it, they make them in four different colors, green, red, blue, and yellow. And they're all of this plastic material, but each color indicates a different um, stiffness or softness if you prefer. So I need a little water on the outside, a little bit of wobble is happening so I want to straighten that out. Okay, so I've got a pretty good shape going on for the for the belly. So, and now I want to do the collaring. So here I want to make sure that I'm bringing this back. And there's a couple of different techniques to do for this, depending upon how big of an opening one wants to create. So, I want to make sure that I have a nice curvature on the outside.
one has to make sure when you're doing something like this that the clay is strong enough and stiff enough to be able to handle what it is that you're doing at this point. So the thinner the clay is, the wetter the clay is, the more fragile it is. So I want to make sure that as I work here to create that opening and then actually gently kind of pressing that downward because I'm trying to emulate the shape of the pot that was submitted as much as possible. So what a person can run into is when you start changing direction like this, going from really wide to really narrow, one has to account for the strength and the weight of the clay. Okay, rim has a little bit of unevenness that I want to trim off. I think I'm pretty much, for where I'm at, I think I want to call it good. I don't want to do anything further that's going to damage the pot. So, trimmed out the base, I have a nice shape that comes out, it comes back in, and I have a small neck. So my neck itself might be a little longer than the piece that Haley gave me. But if you can see that piece, I hope you find in the pot that I've made a nice reflection thereof. So thanks Haley for submitting that pot.